be doing here with this is um, this book has a lot of like reading passages. I'm just going to skim over those. We're not reading them word for word, okay? It has some activities to do. Those activities will then, when we get to the part where you work on your own, those will help you with doing the parts on your own. So some people in my last class did not pay attention, and so then they didn't know what to do when they got to the part where they did it on their own. So please pay attention, okay? So again, page 367 is where we all are looking. All right, so we're looking down here at this explore activity, and what it says is if you have a numbered cube. So they always call it a numbered cube. They don't ever call it a die for whatever reason. But we know what are the choices on a numbered cube? One through six. So why don't you write those down just so you kind of have a visual to look at them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, below that, down here, they give us different events, okay? So we're gonna think about these events and how many possibilities would fit each one of these events. So for instance, rolling a number less than seven, what are the numbers that would be less than seven? All of them, so that would be a total of how many numbers? Six numbers total, right? Rolling an eight, how many of them would be an eight? Zero, there would be none of them. Well, we'll get to that, yes. Last one I'm gonna do with you right now. Rolling a number greater than four, that would be the five and the six. So yes, that would be two choices. All right, so why don't you go ahead and go through the rest of them. Do not worry about these little boxes over here on the side. We'll talk about those in a minute, okay? So go ahead and go through the rest of those events and think about how many would be um, out of that sample space. Okay, so let's look at these other choices. So how many of them would be rolling a five? How many fives would we have? We would have one five, okay? Rolling a number other than six. That would be the numbers one through five, right? So that'd be five possibilities. Rolling an even number, three of them. That'd be the two, the four, and the six. So three possibilities. Rolling a number, let me ask the question. Rolling a number less than five, four of them, one through four. Rolling an odd number, that would be the numbers one, three, and five. So yes, three possibilities. And rolling a number divisible by three. What does that even mean? So it means that you can divide it by three and not get a remainder. So the numbers that are divisible by three are three and six. So that is where you're getting your two from. Very good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is looking at these numbers, okay, six of these, zero of these, two of these, etc. We are going to rank these in order by how likely they would be. One being the most unlikely and nine being the most likely, okay? So there's, cause there's nine choices here, one through nine. So again, one is the most unlikely, the one that's probably not gonna happen. It may even be impossible. Good, so that would be rolling an eight. So over here, I'm gonna put a one, because in fact, there's no way that's happening. What would be number two? Rolling a five, yes, rolling a five. Now there's actually a tie for three and four. There's a tie for three and four. What would they be? Uh-huh. Okay, so rolling a number greater than four would be three or four. There's a tie, someone put three slash four. And then rolling a number divisible by three, there's also two of those, so that would be ranked three and four. Again, a tie. There's also a tie for fifth and sixth place. What would be in fifth and sixth? Rolling an even number or rolling an odd number? So they would have the same chance of happening. All right, one of them is in seventh place. It's being the seventh, likely. Less than five, good. And then eighth place would be Rolling a number other than six. And what is the most likely one? Good. The very first thing, rolling a number less than seven, would be the most likely event. So we're giving that a nine. 
So once again, you are going to have to do something similar to this. So you would think about what are my possibilities, and this possibility, the numbers one through six. You think about for each one of these, how many possibilities would fit that description, and then you rank them in order. One being the least likely, in this case, nine being the most likely. All right, so down there where it says to reflect, it says, of these, are there any events impossible? Good. So our answer here is not, are there any events impossible? Yes, comma, rolling an eight. So it talks about the words impossible, unlikely, as likely as not, likely, and certain. In fact, when we did this in class, we even drew this same number line, even though I didn't get it from the book, so it's kind of interesting. So we know that impossible would be a 0% chance of happening versus certain, which would be a 100% chance of happening. As likely as not would be right there in the middle at 50%, okay? And then we have our unlikely and likely. And we talked about like the weather and the rain and those kind of things. In example one, they already have the answers for you there in example one, but it just kind of takes you through certain things and, they're, and you're explaining it as being likely or unlikely or certain or impossible and you're assigning it a number, okay? So I'm pretty sure my, my other class had no issues with those. I don't really think that's something that we need to individually do, but let's look at the reflect question down here. And it says, the probability of event A is one third. The probability of event B is one-fourth. What can you conclude about these two events? So I'd like for you to compare, compare event A, which is one-third, and event B, which is one-fourth. If you're comparing those, what could we say about them? What do you think, Matthew? They're both fractions, very good. Usually when we say comparing numbers, we're talking about greater than, less than, which one's bigger, which one's less, that kind of thing. Kylie. All right, why do you say? How do we go about comparing fractions? What do we do when we compare fractions? We do something with them. You do, yeah, you need to do something with them. All right, let's think about one-third. Let's think about one-fourth. If I asked for you to turn them into a decimal, or if you rather think of them as percentages, let's go ahead and do one-fourth, because I would hope everyone knows what percent one-fourth is. 25%. All right. Now, one-third, remember one-third and two-thirds? It's evil twin. Those are the ones that I said you should probably remember. Remember those? What was one-third? Good. It was 33, it was 0.33333333, right? So we could, we could estimate it being about 33%. So now when we compare these, when we compare these, what could we say now? One third is greater than one fourth. So the events, which event then would be more likely? Event A. Event A is more likely than event B. That's what they were looking for there when you're comparing those two events. So you look at the two fractions, compare the fractions, you see that one-third is greater than one-fourth, and then so that means that event A is more likely to happen, okay? All right, looking at the top of page 369, again, at the top of page 369, you have this question where it says, your turn. Why don't you try that one, please? Again, at the top of page 369, question three. All right, so it says a hat contains pieces of paper marked with the numbers 1 through 16. So again, the numbers 1 through 16. Tell whether picking an even number is impossible, unlikely, as likely as not, likely, or certain. So even number, that would be half of them, right? So as likely as not, I agree. It also says the last sentence Tell whether the probability is zero, close to zero, one half, close to one, or one. As likely as not would be what number, one half? Okay. All right, so looking at these sample spaces, 
A sample space is how many possible outcomes. So it talks about, like, if you flip a coin, what are the possibilities when you flip a coin? Possibilities are heads or tails. Possibilities are heads or tails. If I rolled a numbered cube, a die, what are the possibilities? One through six, okay? When it talks about a sample space, it uses brackets. Ooh, that was not very good. They kind of look like that. Have you seen those on your keyboard before? You've probably not used them for many things, maybe making like emoji smiley faces or something. That's about it. Mustaches, okay. So that's really something that they're used for here is showing that this is a sample space. These are our possibilities, okay? And then we actually think about what we're wanting to find. And that's what example two is all about. Again, they give this sample space here in step one and they want to know um, rolling an even number. So in this sample space of one through six, the even numbers are two, four, and six. So that is three numbers out of a total of six numbers, which is that one half. And I know you guys know how to do that, but it's important that you know that is mean sample space and also knowing that symbol that they use to show those brackets, those fancy brackets, okay? Let's turn the page to page 370. Why don't you try 370 on four and five, four and five. All right, so number four says, picking a purple marble from a jar with 10 green and 10 purple. What do you think, Cameron? So how did you get that though? 10 out of 20, good. So 10 purples out of 20 total, that's where you get your one half from. All right, and then number five, rolling a number greater than four on a standard number cube. How'd you get that? Six choices. There's two of them that are greater than four, the five and the six. So two over six, which is then one third. So that's like very basic probability. Now this next section is something that we didn't talk about this year, and that is a complement of an event, not a complement like you look nice today. This is a complement with an E, okay? So a complement of an event is it not happening, okay? For instance, they give the example of a deck of cards. Now we've played cards in here, a lot of you like playing cards, and it talks about, in this example, the probability of a red jack. So red jacks, those are the hearts and those are the diamonds, okay? A jack of hearts or a jack of diamonds. There's only two of those in an entire deck. An entire deck has how many cards? 52 cards. So, so that would mean two out of 52 cards are red jacks. So the complement is how many are not red jacks? If there's 52 total cards and two of them are red jacks, how many are not red jacks? That would be 52 minus 2, right? 50 not red jacks. So the probability of it not being a red jack would be this 50 over 52, which then simplifies to 25 over 26. So again, a complement is it not happening. Turn the page. I know you're going to be heartbroken, but we're not going to do this reflect right here. So we're going to be looking at 7 and 8, and this is the last part we're doing together. 7 and 8. 7 and 8, please. All right, let's look over 7 and 8. So 7 says, a jar contains 8 marbles, numbered 1 through 8. So how many total marbles are there? 8. That's going to be our denominator no matter what, okay? How many total choices we have. You pick a marble at random, what is the probability of it, of not picking a marble marked with a five? How many of them are not five? Seven of them are not five. So again, there are seven numbers out of the eight that are not fives. All right, and then this last one, problem number eight, says you roll a standard numbered cube. So that means in a standard numbered cube, we have the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. Find the probability of rolling an odd number 
would be 3 over 6, which is 1 half. So you always want to simplify. What would be the probability of rolling an even number? 1 half, right? 1 half. All right, so this is what I'd like for you to do now. I would like for you, guided practice starts at the bottom of that page. So again, guided practice starts on page 371 and then continues on to page 372. So it's questions 1 through 12. I know that question 1 is kind of long. But questions 1 through 12, and then you're done. Please keep your book until I ask for you to bring it back. You may listen to music, but we are not moving. <laughs>